Hey guys, it's Ozyman, and welcome back to the next part of the Ozyman Masterclass series. In this episode, I want to cover everything you're going to need to know about grammar from the time you start learning Japanese to, you know, the whole way you go through your whole journey learning Japanese. Believe it or not, learning grammar is actually a much more simple process than a lot of people make it out to be. So the grammar itself, yeah, can be difficult, right? Like learning the grammar and like understanding concepts and that can be somewhat difficult, but the actual process you go through of learning grammar is relatively simple compared to some other things, say like outputting in Japanese and stuff like that. So therefore it shouldn't take me too long to get through everything you're gonna to need to know about learning grammar in this video. So the first step to learning grammar, of course, is once you've learned those first 1000 words, like I talked about in the last episode on um, learning words in Japanese, then you wanna head in and use a grammar guide, doesn't matter which one, to learn Japanese grammar. Now I use Take Him, the Japanese grammar guide for Take Him, but there's a lot of different good, you know, sources you can use to learn Japanese grammar. I'm going to make like, I'm going to compile a list of them all in the links and I'll put the, all the links in the description and um, you can go there and take your pick of which kind of grammar guide you want to use. I'm going to ask some people in my server and put together a good list of all different grammar guides. You can use any one of them, a compila you know, compilation of a few of them or whatever you want to do, but I just used Take Him's grammar guide and went through that. Now the actual process of using a grammar guide to learn Japanese grammar is different to what some people say it is. A lot of people, what they'll get you to do is they'll get you to learn the concepts and then they'll say, okay, now use this concept, this, use this grammar, grammar construction to form a sentence. But since we're going for immersion learning here, you're not trying to learn grammar to speak or learn grammar to output in the language. What you're going to be trying to do is learn grammar to understand the grammar, to understand the language. And it's actually a very different process to what it is like to be learning grammar to output in the language. The main difference is for one, it's going to take you way, way less time to get through a grammar guide because normally you'd have to read the grammar description, you know, say, you know, the, say how to use what in Japanese, the particle. And then you'll be like, okay, here's how you use it here and now make some sentences with it. And that's going to take you some time. But what you're going to be doing since you're learning through immersion is you want to get this grammar guide, say, take him and you want to go through and you just want to read it. Don't even try and like full on memorize it or anything. Read it and then they'll have example sentences there, right? And read it and read the description of the grammar until you're able to comprehend and understand the example sentence and then that's enough. Then move on to the next topic and go through these grammar guides until you're able to understand all of these example sentences and move. And so by the time you get to the end of it, you'll be able to understand complex Japanese sentences with a culmination of you know, using all different grammar structures and you won't have had to have actually sit down and do any, you know, grammar exercise or anything. You're just learning essentially this too through immersion in the form of reading descriptions of grammar and then looking at how it's used in sentences. Now that's all there is for using the grammar guide, okay? So you can refer back though to these grammar guides as you go through Japanese, go through your immersion and look at different, um, say you might be watching a video and you hear something you'll be like, what? what's that grammar structure mean? Like, what does this mean again? And you can look it up, go back into the, um, Grammar guide, have a look at it, and there you go, you can review, and then you'll refresh it in your mind, and that's all you really need. Now you might be saying, is this enough? Is it enough just to read it? And the thing is, it really is, and the reason for that is, that, again, it comes back to the whole principle of immersion is key. Now in any language, all grammar is, is it's essentially the glue that holds all of the words and everything together. It's really nothing more than that. It's nothing all like, you know, special constructions, phrases, and all that. It, all it is, is sort of the you know, thing that binds all of the language together and it's the foundation the language is built on. So therefore, anytime you're interacting with Japanese in a sentence or whatever, you're interacting with the grammar as well and furthering your understanding of Japanese grammar. So again, you can see already, this is why immersion is so important because you're immersing yourself in Japanese and having constant contact with the language and with grammar. It's the same thing as like how I talked about with kanji. It's like, you know, remember this thing here? You go from, it's a, you know, straight thing. It's a continuous thing. Say with kanji, you do the initial thing, which will be the RTK, and then you keep going with it. And then this one, with grammar, it'll be the initial thing is the grammar guide, right? You read through that, and then you keep furthering your knowledge through listening to Japanese and encountering Japanese sentences and understanding them. One thing, though, that's pretty common when you're learning a language is there'll be certain circumstances where you'll understand every single word in a sentence, right? But you really won't be able to fully comprehend what that sentence means, and you'll be like, okay, is this a lack of my grammar knowledge or what? And technically, yes, it's a lack of your grammar knowledge, but there's no way to sit down, right, and start like, um, you know, studying to improve that knowledge and be able to understand more and more sentences. I don't know, maybe it would work, but I think it would take way too long. And the way more efficient way is if you don't understand, if there's a sentence like that, that you know all the words, but you don't understand it, just skip over it. When you come back one day, you'll understand it. But it's kind of like, 
every time you understand a sentence, a new sentence, you're building on your knowledge a little bit more in Japanese. So every single time, yeah, you're understanding a sentence, just a little bit, little bit, little bit more, you're building on your knowledge of grammar, right? So eventually, when you should have understood way more other Japanese sentences, when you come back to that one where you knew all the words but didn't understand it because of the grammar, you'll probably find that you understand it now and it makes way more sense even though you haven't specifically studied any grammar. You know, I found this to be the case right in the start of when I was learning Japanese. I get, say, YouTube titles or certain things and I'd read it and know all the words and be like, I still don't really have a clue what they're trying to say here. But then eventually, after, like I said, I'd gone through that process of understanding other things and building on my knowledge of grammar and, you know, my sense of what Japanese means through those means of understanding more and more sentences elsewhere, when I came back to that video eventually, I could, it just made perfect sense. I didn't even have to think about it. And that's the kind of process you go through when it pertains to getting better at grammar. And that's why, again, it's a continuous thing. It's not just something that you do once. But if it's a specific, you know, grammar thing that you don't understand, you can always go back and look at the grammar guide again, like take him or whatever, and review your knowledge of grammar there. Now we'll get onto what I believe is to be the most important aspect of learning grammar. And is that, that is the place of learning grammar in the whole, you know, grand scheme of learning Japanese. So many people, you know, like in the traditional language learning space, they'll be sitting down and doing bloody grammar exercises for years and years and years learning Japanese or any language for that instance. You know, you can go and you'll see people in classrooms and that doing exercises constantly for grammar and it's like the main thing they focus on. I mean, look at Japan, how they learn English. All they're doing is bloody grammar and words and reading and all that. Reading's fine, you know, that's the immersion still and that's awesome. But like, they'll be doing exercises and stuff with reading, not necessarily just sitting down and reading a book, you know? So you really got to be realizing that grammar is only a small part of the language and no matter how much you sit down and study grammar, it's not going to make you any better. So just, you need to be comfortable, like I talked about in the immersion stage, with un being, like, dealing with ambiguity. So there'll be sentences, like I talked about before, where you know all the words, you don't know the grammar, you won't be able to fully understand it because you don't know the grammar, really. That is a part of tolerating ambiguity and just realizing that eventually that'll all be solved by immersing more. So what I'm saying is don't get too stuck in this mindset of thinking that you have to study grammar constantly and get a really, really proficient knowledge of grammar before you can understand Japanese. This knowledge will build itself up just purely through immersion and that's all you really need to worry about is how much you're immersing. And like I said, since it is the glue that holds this whole language together and every language together, you're going to be constantly interacting it with it, with it in your immersion. So you're constantly studying grammar, really. So you don't need to sit down and study and do exercise and read grammar guides or anything. Just the initial point, you have to do that right at the start. And then you get it just from immersion. But honestly, that's all I really want to talk about in this video, guys. I think with this is if you've got any specific questions about grammar, leave it in the comments and I might make a part two to this where I answer all of your questions on grammar. Since this was like a real fundamental just kind of, you know, overview of what learning grammar, I feel like if there's any specific questions you've got about it, leave it in the comments and I'll make a part two of this answering those questions. Also, I've got another video on grammar. I think it's called like why you suck at Japanese grammar or something like that. I'll link that in the description. I go further in detail about learning Japanese grammar and that might be some of assistance for you, for those of you who are having trouble learning the grammar. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. As you can see, this video is way shorter than the other ones, but this isn't a very big topic, you know, honestly. The next video, if I don't do a part two of the grammar, will be on output, you know? And that is gonna be a bloody huge topic. I don't know how long that video is gonna be. It might be two videos, three videos. We'll see what happens. By the way, um, that's it for this video, guys. And please jump in the Discord. I know I say this in every video, but you got to jump in the Discord. It's a really great place, great people on there and really great resources. So please jump in there. And yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks.